Hey guys, my name is Savannah and I'm a 3D artist and illustrator. Today I'm going to be walking you through how I modeled and textured this low poly mermaid character. Eventually I would like to do more videos on how to rig and animate as well as creating an environment for her that's kind of like an imaginary video game because I would have loved a mermaid video game growing up. And eventually I might turn her into another avatar like this bat for my YouTube videos. That's a little bit more complicated though, so we'll see if I am motivated enough. But yeah, this isn't an exactly a step-by-step, -step, but it is a breakdown of my process, so should be helpful for beginners and anyone wanting to get into character modeling. So let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start by adding a mesh circle with eight points, and I just find for character modeling, it's better to start with an even number of points so it's easier to avoid triangles in your mesh. For most models, you want to try and have four points to a face, which is called a polygon, so it's just good to make that a habit. So I'm gonna start with the torso and the tail just because it's basically a tube. I'm gonna be extruding with E, scaling with S, and adding control edges or edge loops with control R. Those are just gonna give me more control over the shape of the mesh. You can use your middle scroll wheel button after you press control R to add more than one loop if you need. And I would recommend having a reference if you're a beginner, just so you know what kind of shapes you're going for. I've done a lot of character drawing and modeling in general, so I didn't really feel like I needed one, but it will definitely speed up your workflow. Here I'm deleting half of the body so I can add a mirror modifier, and that's just going to add the edge symmetrically, and then that way I only have to worry about modeling one side without keeping things even and things like that, so it's just more efficient. So there I merged the points by pressing M, and that's just to close the mesh, and then I'm also gonna have to close the inside of the tail, and you can do that by selecting four points and pressing F, and that will just fill it with a face. And you'll notice I do have triangles at the tip of the tail, and I don't like how pointy that is, so I am going to redo that in a second. But first I'm gonna add an edge loop to the inside of the tail, so I can pull it out and kind of match the outside. And this is a good example of why it's a good idea to avoid triangles because Blender didn't sense that the edge loop should go all the way to the end. So I had to use K, the knife tool, to manually add it. Here I'm selecting the tip with Alt left click and that'll just select the complete loop. And then I'm gonna select these two points and press F to make an edge in between them. And then you have a nice four pointed face that you can fill in on either side. And now I have a nice round, rounded tail. So that circle is proportional editing and you can turn that on by pressing O or pressing the bullseye at the top center of the screen. And that's just gonna give you the ability to affect more than one point at a time. So it's easier to make bigger changes. Here I'm just modeling the front versus the back of the body. So for the arms, I'm gonna select the top two faces and press I to inset them. And then I have an add-on, which is the loop tools add-on, and you can turn that on in Blender, it's built in. Right click and choose circle. And this is just gonna make a better arm shape. And then I'm gonna extrude those out into a T pose. T poses are important for rigging your model later on so you can make different poses with them. So I would recommend doing this for all of your models. So I'm gonna start off by making more glove-like hands and then I'm going to go into a more detailed hand with fingers later on. But again, just extruding and scaling. And this takes trial and error. I have edited out a lot of the mistakes I made, so it's definitely not a one and done. This is actually the first hand I've ever modeled. <laughs> so it's gonna look bad until it looks good. Then here I'm adding more edge loops to get more definition to the arm and make sure it will deform better when I animate it. 
And then to make the more detailed hand, I am going to separate the hand mesh from the arm and you do that by pressing P. And I'm gonna select it again and go back into edit mode, fill in these faces and add more loops for the fingers. And that's why I separated it from the arm because I did not want these loops to go down the entire body. So I'm going to extrude each of these fingers by themselves and then snap them to the X axis so they're going in the right direction. You just do that pr by pressing E for extrude and then whatever axis you want it to snap to. So in this case X and it will show up with that axis line. And then from here I'm just going to mess with the shape and I'm not going to include the entire process because I'm just pushing points around. But I am going to stitch this back to the arm. So I fill in all of the faces, I actually just need the middle two to be deleted after this. And you need to join the two meshes together, so selecting both in object mode and then pressing command J, and that will join them into the same mesh, and then in edit mode you can go and stitch these together the same way that we have been closing all of the other holes in the mesh by selecting points and pressing F. And that's the basic process for the hand, so it's not too bad, but it does take a lot of work to get it looking good. So I know it looks like an oven mitt, but I will fix it. Here I'm just adding knuckles. I'm gonna select all of these edge loops and press com Command B to bevel them. And then use my middle mouse button to scroll some more loops in, and that's just so they deform better should I animate them. And then here I'm just adding some knuckles. You don't need to do this, but I think it looks nice. And then I'm going to use a smooth vertices tool. You go to vertex and then smooth vertices and this just helps align the points a little bit because when you're pushing things around sometimes you might accidentally move points you don't mean to. So from here, I know it looks bad but I do fix it off camera. <laughs> so for the head, I chose to extrude it directly out of the torso so I didn't need to stitch it on later. And this is just because I wanted to go for a truly low poly look, although you don't have to do this. You can just make a separate cube and subdivide it and get more detail in there if you want. I just do this because I plan to animate and rig this later on and bring it into Unity to make avatars and it's just better if the head is connected. So again, this is a lot of trial and error so I'm just going to fast forward through it. But I will show you how I close the top of the head if you choose to do it this way. Basically, you're going to need to extrude the middle points so they match up to the front and back points. So one for each row. And then you're going to fill it in like we have been doing with other parts of the mesh. And you can see that it's going to make a triangle, so I decide to divide that last edge and give it an extra point so it has four points, but I don't think this is necessary. And I do want to warn you guys that if you're going for that painted on face look, try and make the front of the face as flat as possible because if it's too curved, your facial features are going to be stretched around the face, which I didn't realize, so I'm going to have to fix that later on. Here I'm doing the ear by selecting two edges and pressing Control B to bevel it. And you'll notice that there are two triangles around the ear, but I figured that was okay because that's technically part of her skull and it's not going to need to be deformed for any reason if I animate it. Here I'm making fin ears, so that is why they look very squarish. I'm not trying to make a human ear at all. And then to make the hairline, I'm going to select all of the faces that would be covered with hair and then separate them with P. And then you're going to select that new hair and bring it back into edit mode. And you're going to extrude them and then press Alt S so that they extrude from the center of the face equally. 
so it has an even thickness all along the hairline. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to have individual hair locks that are going to go back into the head and this will just help them blend because it'll be the same color as the roots of the hair. Otherwise, without this, you're going to have skin peeking through the hair locks and that's just not the aesthetic we're going for. <laughs> So to make the hair, you're going to bring in a Bezier curve, and those come with points that you're just going to delete by selecting them and pressing X to delete vertices, and then you're going to grab the pen tool and start drawing the curve for whatever kind of hair you want. I'm going to show this process for a few of the hair pieces, and then I'm going to cut forward. But once you have the curve, you go down to the data tab, which is the green arc, and go down to the bevel tab and where it says depth, that's what's going to make the thickness of the strand. I lowered the resolution of these to get a low poly look and then I'm going to select the points and press Alt S to change the thickness. You can also check that fill caps box in the bevel tab and that'll just close the end of the cylinder. So the Curve tool is not the most intuitive in Blender, um, but it works for something simple like this. So it'll take a little bit of practice, but it will work out. And then I'm just going to start duplicating these curves, and I'm actually going to put another mirror modifier on this one so I don't have to do every single piece of hair. And you are going to have to kind of finagle the roots of the hair into the head and it will look bad until it looks good, but the low poly doesn't give you a ton of flexibility, so you just got to mess with it. Now I'm just going to duplicate this, repeat this process down the hair, and that's pretty much it as far as getting the shape. I am going to have to convert these pieces of these curves into mesh in order to put textures on them. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So you're going to select your hair piece and go to object convert to mesh. you should be able to go into edit mode with it. I thought this was too many points to look low poly, so I'm gonna undo what I just did and lower the resolution. So you're going to undo that, go to your curve data panel and just mess with the resolution until you're happy with it. So now it's just gonna have less points once I convert it to a mesh. You don't need to do this, but I just wanted to keep that in so you understand why it changed. Now I'm going to separate the mirrors from each other, so I'm going to select one side, select some points, use control plus on the number pad, and that'll just help you select one half, and then I'm going to separate it with P, and now they're separated, so I have individual hair strands on either side. And finally, I'm just going to add the top fin to the tail, and then we're going to do her shirt. So we're going to do it similar to the hairline. You're just going to select the faces, separate them, bring them back into edit mode, extrude them, alt S, and then just model them to however you want your shirt to look. I did try to do seashells, but it was a little bit too annoying. So now I'm going to show you how to UV unwrap. These are the final seams I ended up with. It was a lot of trial and error, so I thought the time lapse was too confusing to follow. So again, these are the boundaries I ended up with and that UV map on the top left is what it looks like when you unwrap it and edit it. And here's what the mirror modifier turned off. So you can see how I separated everything. Basically anything that's going to be a different color is going to have its own boundary. And then the hair is really simple. I just have one edge going from top to bottom that is not super visible. <laughs> and you're not actually going to UV unwrap. So to 
mark a seam you're going to select with alt left click u mark seam i'm going to show you again alt left click u mark seam if you put it in the wrong spot or want to change it same process but instead of mark seam you do clear seam so once you have all of your seams you're going to select everything with a and then do u for unwrap and it will bring it into your uv editor make sure you're in the uv editing window tab but basically you're going to select all of your different pieces by pressing l move them off of the grid and then you're going to move them back however it makes the most sense for your model basically the areas that are going to have a lot of detail need to be bigger and you tend to want to group similar pieces together so here i'm putting both pieces of the head and you can put a grid on your uv to kind of help you see how your changes are affecting the model to make a new image texture you're going to go over to image press new title it whatever you need i like to stick around 1024 but you can go lower or higher just keep in mind file sizes and i like to keep it blank to start and then you have a new image texture that you can put into your materials which i'll show you in a second to put it on you're going to make a new material and with the image texture you saved out you're going to put it into this color tab and select whatever your UV texture image is saved as. And then go to material preview and you'll see how the grid is mapped onto your model. So you have a few different options. I'm gonna stick with UV grid, but basically the goal here is to make sure that your squares are actually squares and aren't being stretched into rectangles or weird shapes and that the areas of your model that need the most detail have more squares than other places. So this is a pretty simple model with a lot of solid color, so I'm not too worried about being detailed on this UV unwrapping, but it is definitely one of the more difficult parts of 3D for me and I think for a lot of people, so it just takes a lot of trial and error. So once you have your UV map finalized, you're going to go into the texture paint window tab and apply a blank image texture to your model. You're just gonna do the same thing you did for the UV texture, but it should appear as a black blank model and you can test if it's working by drawing on the left. So I'm just gonna start filling in different areas. You can do this by selecting part of the faces and then pressing control plus, and it should kind of section it off in a similar way to how you unwrapped it and you're just going to fill in your colors. I played a lot with the colors of this model because like I said I didn't have a reference so not the most efficient but we'll get there. And then for the hair I'm just going to fill it in as a solid color because it is not unwrapped. So to apply a material to multiple objects you're going to need to select the objects you want to apply the material to and then select something that already has the correct material on it last you'll know it's last because it'll have this lighter orange color and then you're going to press ctrl l link materials so here i'm adding shadows with a darker color and i'm gonna rotate between painting directly on the model and then if I can't get to an area without messing up another I'm going to use the UV texture on the left. This part's the most fun for me personally. I really like it so it really makes the model come to life. So this is a warning that Blender does not automatically save updates to your image textures that you're painting. So every once in a while you need to go up to image and save. Once you do it the first time, you can just press Alt S when you're in this area. And you should get a pop-up down here saying packed to memory image. When you have unsaved changes, there will be a little asterisk that comes up next to image and that means if Blender were to crash or something, whatever you did right before this popped up is not going to be saved. So this little, these squiggles will disappear if it crashes.
crashes or if I don't save. And also just pressing Control S to save the file does not save the image textures. You need to manually save the image textures. So this is your warning because it really sucks if you lose all of your progress. And I hope this is something that will change with future updates, but for now, make sure you get rid of this asterisk whenever you can. Okay, so the face of the model took a few times, so I don't actually have every attempt recorded, but it's all the same process. So I am going to turn on stabilization, which is in the stroke menu at the bottom. And this is just going to help stabilize my cursor for those finer details. And you're going to see what I was talking about with if your mesh is too curved for the head, it's going to stretch the facial features. And that's just something I think is specific to low poly models. Yep, there we go, so stretched. So I'm gonna have to mess with the geometry a little bit to try and fix this. Not ideal, but not the end of the world. I was able to get it looking good by the end. I ended up having to add a few more edge loops to it as well, just to have more resolution and control. Here are some of the points got disconnected, so if that happens to you, you can just merge them by pressing M at center. And here I'm just showing you some of the process of adding more edge loops to try and fix this issue. But like I said, if you just model it with more geometry and a flatter front, it'll look fine. So this is after I fixed all of this, but for the hair, I'm just going to do a gradient and it's mapped to all of the locks of hair. The reason why that front piece looks messed up is because I unwrapped it when I actually did not need to. So the other pieces I did not unwrap, but that seam tells the program how to tell the beginning from the end. If you do end up unwrapping it, you can just rotate it to match the direction that it should be going. This back piece was upside down, so I'm just selecting it and rotating it. This is what it looks like if you do not unwrap it, which is what I want for this. So it's just easy gradient for all of the locks. And that's pretty much it, guys. I really hope I didn't skip anything important. She turned out super cute. I'm gonna show you what she looks like posed. Isn't she so cute? I love her. So I am planning to make some future breakdowns on rigging and doing the whole Unity process to make her uh, avatar for my YouTube videos. And I'd even like to make some environments and kind of make fake video game scenes imagining this as a retro video game that you could play as a mermaid or something like that. I don't know. Fun things. Please let me know in the comments if I can clarify anything or what you'd like to see next. It's super helpful for my channel, so please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!